is she manages this how she uh, get a negative one? Four plus negative five. So when she's multiplying two things together, two things, two numbers that have the same. They're the same. Say what? They are the same number. If they're the same number, what do we call this number? We're going to work with exponential notation. The base. So the base is the same. So we can put them together. Uh, the exponent is found by adding the exponents together. Okay. Now. When we have negative exponents, we apply this rule of, of adding the exponents together, and it's not as easy to, to just like write it out longhand and see why that is. But remember, we used the example of, say, a to the third times a to the fourth. I get the same base here. And that's a to the seventh. And how do we prove that, justify that? Do we just add the exponents together? Yeah? You factor it out. Factor it out, right? A to the third is a factor of A times a factor of A times a factor of A. Uh, factors of A, four of them. And all together, we're multiplying those three times those four, a total of seven factors of A. So we just add it together. And then we just carry that rule, that pattern that we observe, over even to when we have negative exponents. We're going to add negative exponents as well. Okay. Oh, then, what was your mistake in the last line, the final line? Yeah. She multiplied two thirds by negative one. Yeah, that's not what that means, right? So, she misinterpreted this negative as having something to do with whether or not the number is negative. Uh, what does that mean if it has a negative power? If something has a negative power, it doesn't mean the number is going to be negative. Um, we could do that. There is a fraction raised to a power, but that's not, the question is, what does the negative exponent mean? You're giving me that if we have a fraction raised to a power, then each thing can get its own uh, power, its own negative one, which is true. But what does the negative, what does the negative exponent mean? It doesn't mean this number is going to be negative. That's not what it has to do. Can I just find a decimal place to come back on? Uh... No, it doesn't mean that. That's, uh, are you thinking of scientific notation? Yeah. That's when you multiply by 10 to the negative one. That definitely is related. It's 10 to the negative one. So, and if you see the negative exponent, what are you supposed to, how are you supposed to interpret that? How are you supposed to do that? And you're supposed to, if it's on top, you put on bottom, it's on bottom, it's on top. Right, it goes to the other place. Or you, we could really say, uh, also, Put it in the denominator, right? Put it in the denominator and make the power positive. So we can do that with a fraction too. One over two thirds to the positive one. That's just one over two thirds. So now we're dividing one by two thirds, but we don't like to divide by two thirds. How do we do that instead instead of dividing by two thirds? Multiply by three over two, multiply by the reciprocal. So one times three halves. One times anything is just itself, so three halves. <coughs> okay. So this negative exponent doesn't have one bit to do with whether or not this number comes out negative. It doesn't have anything to say about it. If this number is supposed to come out negative, it's going to be decided by a negative being here, or maybe out here. Okay. That's what decides if the number is negative. That negative exponent has nothing to do with the number Um, just another thing about fractions and negative exponents. If we had two thirds to the negative two, long story short, we could just take the reciprocal of the fraction and raise it to the positive. And if you're a little bit creative and patient, you would take about three or four steps. You can definitely show that uh, we could, well, we could get the negative two to the two, two to the negative two, three to the negative two, 
then they could switch positions, and then we could read back the exponent back out, or whatever. But a negative exponent to a fraction just means it's actually the reciprocal of this fraction raised to the positive power. Negative exponents have nothing to do with negative numbers. It actually means it's in the denominator, or if it's in the denominator, So I'm just trying to simplify this expression. And as in this first step here, this something's not right. So write down on your notes what's not right about it. So what did Cecil do incorrectly there in the first line? Uh, well, he didn't. He should have given it a. Uh, a negative three exponent to the five as well, so it should have a negative three there. Um, so just, you, you said trinomial, and I just want to clarify. This actually is, is not a trinomial. Uh, polynomials, their terms are separated by addition. If, if you, you're multiplying all this stuff together, that's actually one thing. So we can consider this to be actually a monomial, because it's just one big product. Um, so should have had a negative three given to the five as well. A lot of times when five, or especially a number, doesn't have an exponent, people don't think to bring the exponent over to the number, but the number does need an exponent as well. Um, should be five to negative three as well. The final step he has here, just kind of discussing something we've Many times. Why is t to the twelfth in the denominator? Yeah, negative um, exponent. Negative exponent t to the twelfth, or t to the negative twelfth. That means really uh, means t to the twelfth in the denominator. What we should have is really a five to the negative three. So we have, what's five to the negative three mean? It's raised to the negative three power. One over 125. One over five to the third. It's s to the sixth over one. on Tyler, but Tyler just said, is this negative 15? For a couple of reasons. This isn't 5 times 3. It's 5 to the third. To the third power. Third power doesn't mean multiply by 3. It means multiply this thing five or uh, 3 times. And the negative doesn't have, as we said, anything to do with whether or not the number itself is negative. It means actually I'm in the denominator is what it means. Okay. One over, it's over because it's a negative. That's what the negative means. It means that this should be in the denominator. Five to the positive third. And when we raise five to the third, it means five times five times five. That's what five means. So we have one over 125 times s to the sixth times one over t to the twelfth. That's s to the sixth in the numerator, one times s to the sixth times one over one twenty-five times one times t to the twelfth. That's <coughs> again simplify the expression with exponents, negative exponents, all sorts of stuff. This person has decided first, Tamara, has decided to take this and move it into the numerator. I think you can see why she's kind of thinking that. But ultimately, it's not correct. Why is it incorrect? Exactly. C is not a part of it. C is its own factor is not grouped together with the d and being raised to the negative one. The negative one power is only for the d. This mistake happens a lot 
when C doesn't have an exponent, or you don't write an exponent of 1, which is what that exponent is. Okay. And then our brains just kind of group C and D together and then make it raised to the negative 1. But it's only D. Only D is raised to the negative 1. So really, we should be getting 3C cubed times this D times this D that can be moved up to the numerator over 9. And C is still down here. We get 3C cubed D squared over 9C. 3 and the 9 can cancel because 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 9 divided by 3 is 3. C cubed D squared over C. Three C. So you're saying, um, let's see, what we, we could write it just like this, c cubed over c cubed squared, like each one of these can break down, so it's a fraction, and so c cubed over c, we notice there's this rule that we have c to the 3 minus 1, so we have 1 over 3rd, so c squared over 1, d squared over 1, so all together we get c squared, d squared over This subtraction rule is not just a rule that we memorize mindlessly, but one that we proved to be true, or at least convinced ourselves is true. Because what we really have is c times c times c divided by c. Well, this c can get divided by this c. And now we have 1 times c squared. first line is incorrect. Uh, so, what happened? Yeah? Um, negative and minus sign. So now we're going to switch out to a positive. Which all the others. So it'll be plus negative 9B minus 4B. Oh, okay. Plus 7. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Essentially what we need to do is apply the negative to everything in the parentheses. Distribute the negative, or I don't know what chances. Uh, Say is change that to a positive and then switch the signs of everything in here. Or just distribute the negative and, and get what you get here. Okay. So we forgot to distribute. minus 4b to the 4th would be negative 2b to the 4th. Then we get negative 6b to the 3rd minus 9b to the 3rd. That's, that turns out to be the same because even when I did it wrong, it still had a 9b to the 3rd. That was right. Um, then no b squared. So we got b, 5b. So this is 5b plus 7 instead of minus 7. So last one, multiplying two together. Uh, first is a multiplication fine. And uh, you know, what's the reason for drawing those arrows? Because it's right, and if you don't do it, it's wrong. No, it's not about right and wrong. So what why is Molly doing this? Multiply them. To multiply them? Okay. Could you multiply them without the arrows? It's kind of helpful remember each one. Yeah, it's just a reminder. Just a helpful little tool to keep everything organized. Okay? So she knows that she needs to distribute everything from here into everything in here. So just to organize the distribution process. Make sure everything gets multiplied by everything else. Every pair has to be made, and 
and those pairs get multiplied together. But what's wrong with Molly's final line? Why is that incorrect? Tyler? She uh, didn't point out what to the negative 3a and the square to the negative 20a squared. Okay, so she's, she's just pulled down the negative 20a squared and maybe just lost track and didn't bring down the negative 3a squared. Okay, so she just uh, maybe forgot about the negative 3a squared. Um, what's something that she maybe could have done to make sure she didn't miss out on that negative 3a squared? Cross As she combines like terms, like this one, uh, cross it out. And then when you combine those two, cross those out, and cross it out all along the way. Does anybody do anything differently? Any other way of keeping track of it? I had um, somebody last class say that what she does, let me move this out of the way so I can show you what she's talking about. So she'll multiply 2a cubed, right? So we get 2a times a squared, get 2a cubed. And then she'll move on to the next one, get negative 20a squared, but that's not a like term, right? So I'll just write it right here. Uh, that's not a like term with either of these. Okay. But when she gets to negative 3a squared, well, that is a like term with negative 20a squared, so she'll just write it like this. Put it right underneath, so she can just work her way down, make sure that they all get combined. And she says, oh, when she gets to negative, or to uh, positive 30a, that is a like term with uh, that a term that's there. And plus six, that's the only constant that we've had so far, so it can be its own new thing. So that way we just kind of list things vertically and make sure that we keep track of uh, everything that's supposed to get combined, so that's a nice idea too. Uh, so, so drawing those arrows and crossing things out or writing them in a vertical list like that, it's just a way of keeping it straight, not that you have to do it that way, and that's the only way that's right. Uh, just a way of keeping it straight. So if you have some other way that makes sense to you to keep that stuff straight, make sure that everything is distributed, and make sure all the like terms get combined. If you think you're just really good at keeping track of it in your head, you don't need to draw anything or write it any special way, then go ahead and do that. But uh, I would say you'll probably lose track at some point in your math career. So it's not bad to practice something, some kind of uh, organization. Any questions from the other part of the homework? Multiplying two binomials together, or multiplying big long polynomials together? Good on that. <laughs> Ask away if you have questions. If you don't, pass it in. And as we start by point two, let's just remind ourselves what a polynomial is. We're going to be dealing with, let's see, in section 5.3, we had polynomials, right? just these strings of many terms we put together into this one big group, and we call it a polynomial, many terms, many numbers. Uh, in 5.2, and for a lot of chapter 5, we're going to be dealing with polynomial functions. Right? So uh, first we're going to remind ourselves what a polynomial is, and then we'll talk about a polynomial function. Can anybody remind us what a polynomial is, what a polynomial looks like, what a polynomial is made up of? A bunch of monomials. A bunch of monomials, yeah, okay. So a monomial, what's a monomial look like? What are all the pieces a monomial might have? A variable. A variable number. A power. A, power. And a, a constant. A variable, maybe the uh, power, maybe uh, a number that you're multiplying by that whole thing. Okay? So, this whole thing, if you see something that looks like this, this might be a positive or a negative. So, just make sure we include the negative in this. It's a term. That's what we call a term. So, uh, in 3x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 9. Okay. Notice I don't have an x to the first. That's okay. You don't have to have them all there. But in this 
This is a term. 2x squared is a term. Negative 5x cubed is a term. Plus 9 is a term. Uh, all of these things are what we call terms. Okay. What do we call these guys right here? They have a special name. The number 3, 2, negative 5. They are they're constants, but because they're part of a term, they have a special name. This is the constant. Okay, we might as well call that a constant. Right? This term will not change as x changes. It'll just be 9 all the time, all day long. What's the, what's the special name that we give to those things that are multiplying by the variables? Let's start with C. Yeah? Coefficients. All of these are coefficients. Anybody remember how to tell what degree this polynomial is? Yep, it's the fourth degree because the highest exponent is four. That's exactly right. The highest exponent is four, so it's called the degree four. Uh, highest power. So now we found the term that contains the highest power, the highest exponent. And so its coefficient is a special coefficient that has a special name. It's the leading coefficient. It's that name because if we were to write it in a traditional standard way where we put the highest power first and the next highest power next and on down the line, it would be the coefficient that's out in front. In this case, since kind of did that, it is out in front. It is the leading coefficient. Okay, so quick informal quiz here. How many terms does this polynomial have? It's got four terms. This one right here, 2x squared, negative 5x cubed, and the constant term, 9. Okay. What's the coefficient of x cubed? Uh, that's the coefficient of x squared. What's the coefficient of x cubed? Of x to the third power. Negative 5. Okay. So 2 is a coefficient. Uh, it's a coefficient of x squared. Negative 5 is a coefficient of x cubed. 3 is a coefficient of x to the fourth. 3, because it's with x to the fourth, and x to the fourth has the highest power, that's called the leading coefficient. 3 is the leading coefficient. Okay. That's what a polynomial looks like. If, if you have a term that looks anything other, looks like anything other than this, you don't have a polynomial. So if it's divided by x, that's no good. If the power that you're seeing is negative, if you have a negative power up here, that's no good. You're going to be multiplying by x to a positive power. Okay, so now we'll talk about that was a polynomial. It's just a string of numbers that's being added together. Some of them positive, some of them negative. Um, so, what is a function? What makes a function a function? Saying a definition we've said many, many times before. Yeah, back me. Put stuff in, get stuff out. Put stuff in, get stuff out. Input, output, function, right? Almost almost completely the definition of a function. This one other little piece. Yeah. For every um, thing you put in, there's only one output. Okay. So for every input, there's only one output. Right. But for the most part, the most important thing about a function is that stuff goes in and stuff goes out. Okay. Um, all right, so a polynomial function is a function where you can step into a polynomial, and then you can track on what comes out of it. So uh, let's see. Polynomial function, example of a polynomial function would 
be the 10. we have here is a polynomial function. Here's the polynomial part. Okay. And the function part is that we just say equals the output. This will, when we put stuff in for x, then this represents what comes out of the function. So if we want to say we, we want to evaluate this function, evaluate this polynomial function for x equals 2, what do you think that means? So why don't you do that? Um, it's not that difficult. But if you do lose track of what you're doing, you, you don't plug it in quite right, you forget a negative, whatever, it can come out wrong. So I want you to just take it, plug in two, and then we'll discuss what we got, make sure we did it correctly. Yeah. That's all I want you to do right now, just plug in two and see what the output is. Plug 2 in for x. So I'm just going to use the function notation here. The function is called f. Here is the function that we call f. And you can see how x is the input variable. x is the input. So if I want to plug in 2 for x, I can show that by writing f of 2. Not, it's not f times 2, but f with 2 plugged in for x. That should be 8 times 2 plus 5 times 2 fourth minus three times two squared minus two to the third. Okay. I'm very uh, intentional about putting those parentheses there. Let me show you why. Okay. So um, see here I'm supposed to subtract two to the third. Two to the third is eight. Okay. Now tell me what uh, I mean, is that is that correct? I put a 36 there. Okay. Well, I'm not crazy. I didn't just pick 36 out of nowhere. How did I get 36? Okay. So I took three times two, and I took six to the second power, and then got 36. Okay. There's a reason we shouldn't do this. It's because well, it goes all the way back to the order of operations. It's the order of operations that we agreed upon. Uh, one thing about it is that if I write an exponent, it only applies to the number that it's right above. It's only above the two. It only applies to the two. Clearly the parentheses are there to make the two apply to the two. Okay? If I want to multiply three times two first and then square it, I would have to do three times two squared. Then I multiply three times two get six and square it. It's not 36, so we should get rid of 36. We should be very careful here. This is 2 squared. First is 4. That's what 2 squared is. And now negative 3 times 4 is just negative 5. Okay. Similarly, this isn't 10 to the 4th. It's first 2 to the 4th, which is 16. And 5 times 16 is... Eight times two, that's 16. Uh, 80 plus 16 is 96. Uh, negative 12 minus eight, that's negative 20. So now we get 76. Is that? That's why I got on the calculator when I did all that. That's why when I thought when you said 30, 90, 36, I was like, what? Oh, you got all that speech you should have gotten. Yeah. You tried to make it clear that 36 was a mistake. Yeah, I thought you were kind of saying the answer. Uh, okay, I want you to do this again. I just want to plug a different number in. I want to evaluate this polynomial function for another value of x. Let's do it for x equals mm, negative 3. <coughs> Alright, well, if you made a mistake, hopefully you found it. If, uh, 
Uh, if not, let's see where, if, if we can work it together and see maybe what happens. So you're gonna put a negative three in for x, that, that, that's what that means. All right, so my recommendation here is, again, to use the parentheses. You'll see me use it. If you don't, it would be very easy with uh, this number supposed to be negative, uh, and with all these exponents here, for instance, negative three uh, to the second power. Put negative three to the second power. Nine. Nine. Negative three times negative three, which would be a positive nine. What about negative three to the third? Negative times negative. Negative times negative times negative. Why would it be in a negative? Okay. What about negative three? Squared. What's the difference between that and that? No difference? What are we supposed to multiply by itself twice? Negative three. Just three. Just three. Just the number that's right immediately there. Here, immediately is a parenthesis, which is grouping together the negative and the three. There's no parentheses grouping the three with the negative. So two only is telling you to multiply the three by itself. So you take three times three times a negative, so that's a negative nine. Okay. With all these negatives and exponents flying around, it could get kind of confusing, okay? So what I like to do is just go through, take out all the x's and replace them with empty parentheses. So five parentheses to the fourth minus three, parentheses squared minus parentheses to the third. That's all x means anyway, it's just a placeholder for this value that you're gonna plug in for x. They go into all the empty parentheses and put negative three. Make sure you keep this stuff that we talked about in mind. All right, one by one, eight times negative three is negative 24. Okay, now what's negative three to the fourth? It's gonna be positive or negative? Positive. 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 We've got an even power here, right? So it's gonna come out to be a positive And five times 81 is 405? Nine. I just did that in my head. That was impressive. Are you impressed? No. Don't be impressed. Don't slow it up. 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 Don't Everyone stare. <laughs> Negative three cubed. Negative twenty-seven times a negative. Seven. That's kind of nice. Those just kind of cancel each other out. We have four or five minus twenty-four is three eighty-one. Okay. Just be careful with those negatives. It's the biggest hang-up uh, when we're doing that. All right. So that's something we call direct substitution. We, by hand, take out the x's, replace them with a number, and then do all the arithmetic. Okay. There's also a thing called synthetic substitution where you're not really doing the work. You're doing some arithmetic, but it's a little bit magic, and uh, it's short. It's much, much shorter. Okay. So we will talk about synthetic substitution. Um, one thing I do want to show you quickly is, you saw me using my calculator, you can use your calculator to do this if you want to speed up the process. I suggest you get to be an expert at doing it by hand so that you know exactly what's happening, you get a feel for it. Um, and then if you are an expert at it and you want to save yourself some time, then we can use our calculators. Okay? So you can do eight times negative three, um, plus five times negative three, raise that to the fourth power, minus three times negative three, uh, square that, there's a button for square, 
minus 3, no, no, negative 3, raise that to the third power. So in, in one line uh, of, of numbers, we can have the calculator do the whole thing all at once. You want to be really careful when you're doing this because you don't want to just trust the number that comes out to make sure it's negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. It's all in parentheses. Everything's coming out exactly the way that it should. Okay. And you get 381. Okay. Um, there's, there's actually a way that we could set this calculator up so that we can plug whatever we want in for x. Okay. That's right here. This is our function screen. Okay. Function number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. This function, we want this function to be that one right there, 8x plus blah, blah, blah. Okay, so 8x uh, plus 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus x cubed. Okay. So this calculator understands that x is this variable that we want to replace uh, with whatever number that we tell it. Okay. And we can view the output of this function with, given, with different inputs in a couple different ways. Um, one way is the table. So if we hit second, and in this graph, there's a word table above it. So we hit yellow button, yellow command table. Okay. And now, let's test it out. We put in two before, we, we test that out. 76, just like we got before. Put negative three in there for x, 381. Okay. And now we can plug in anything that we want. Okay. That's pretty neat. Um, we can plug in small numbers, big numbers. We can plug in 20. Plug in five, okay. Uh, take a look at this function. I want you to just think about this for about 30 seconds, this question that I'm about to ask you. Take a look at this function. Okay, we're gonna start talking about some, a, a thing called end behavior, okay? We'll do synthetic division after we get done with this end behavior stuff, or synthetic uh, substitution. Okay, so take a look at this function and ask yourself, when we put in a big number for x, and then a bigger number for x, and an even bigger number for x, a bigger and bigger positive number, what will we start to see as the output? Will the output just get bigger and bigger? Will it be big, big negative numbers? Will the outputs just kind of start leveling up and, and getting numbers closer and closer to 3 or negative 7? What do you think is going to happen as we plug in big, big numbers for x? What kind of outputs do you think we're going to get? going in that direction or not. Okay, so give it a, a few seconds of thought. Just sit there, look at it. Look at the examples we've done and imagine what would happen to the outputs as we put in big numbers for x. Smaller than yeah, what you were won't be like big huge numbers will be like less than than if they were all positive or all negative. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so if the coefficients are a mix, which they are, they are a mix here. They'll be smaller, but what would they be? Will they be positive or will they be negative? Got theories on that one. Four. The question is. Daniel was saying, if instead of negatives we had 8x plus 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus x cubed, obviously as we put in big numbers for x, 
just going to be adding all these positive numbers together and getting really, really big positive numbers. Right? And if they were all negative, well, then every number that we got would be negative, and now negative numbers together gets a big negative number. But the question I'm asking now is, and that's a good observation, but now the question is, we've got a mix of positive and negative coefficients, so what will it be? Will it, will it tend to be bigger positive numbers? Or will it be, because of those negative, num those negative coefficients, will we dip down into the negative numbers as we put in really big values for x? Will it slow to lay balance each other, uh, each other out and we start just getting like zero? It depends on how many negatives there are. It depends how many negatives there are? Like say, and like say for instance, that one right there it has two negatives, a negative three and a negative x. Yeah. Well, if you have two negatives, that one just makes a positive. And they're being added together, they're not being multiplied. All add. Right? Negative three x squared, whatever that number is, minus whatever x squared is. Yeah. Or x cubed. Whatever x cubed is, subtract. So here we've got, you know, if, you, if we put big values in for x, we'll have here some positive numbers, right? And here we're going to have some negative numbers. And overall, will that result, as we put, this is only for big values of x, not 1, not 2, but we're talking about 10, 100, 1,000. Right? If these ones are positive and these ones are negative, when we add together, will the result be positive or will it be negative? That's what we're trying to figure out. And there is a way, and it'll make sense soon enough, to just look at the polynomial and say, hey, of course, as we put in the big values for x, we'd have to get these kinds of numbers out. Right? And if we put in negative, big negative values for x, this is what we'd have to get out of the function. Okay. So to, uh, to help us look at that, let's take a look at a, a simpler looking uh, polynomial. Right. So we got x squared plus x plus 1. Okay. And what we have here, this, this uh, pink rectangle, the height of the pink rectangle represents what x squared is. The green one represents what 1 times x is. And 1 represents, well, just 1. That part will just be constant. It'll just be that uh, 1 no matter what x is. Okay? You can see what x is right here. x is 1.1. 1 .1. Okay? So if I let x be 1.9, if I let x be, if I give it to be 2, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, I can let x be 1.9 or 2.1 or whatever. So uh, if x were 2, let's say that was 2, well, then what would x squared be worth? Fix it for you. Be a little more exact. OK, x is 2 now. So by plugging 2 for x, what will x squared be worth? 4. 4, and x will be 2, two and 1 will be 1. 1, always 1, it won't change. So you see this pink thing is what, what uh, this term will be when you take x, whatever x is, and plug it in and do that. And there's what this will be, and there's what this will be. And you can see how I've taken this y value, and I've added on this y value, and I've added on 1. So this is at the end, what the, the total would be. So we're taking 4 plus 2 plus 1, and that should give us 7. So that's, that's how that works. Now what we can do is we can change what these numbers are, these ones right here, by changing these. A is this number, B is this number, C is this number. AX squared plus BX plus C, right? Quadratic. All right. So. All of the coefficients are positive, as Daniel said earlier. So if we keep putting in bigger and bigger values for x, these numbers will get bigger and bigger and bigger. When we add them together, the total will be bigger and bigger and bigger, and they'll be positive. Right? Um, how about if we take this simple function? What if we don't let x be positive numbers? What if we, we go into the negative numbers? Then when we add them all together, what kind of numbers will we see positive or negative?
have negative values for x, clearly one times a negative number will be negative. What's the story behind this pink guy right here? It's got a yeah. Taking this negative number and we're squaring it, so we're getting a positive number. Okay. So we put negative numbers in for x and we square it. Will this always be positive? This this piece right, just this pink one. Will it always be positive? It has to be basically like counteract negative. Doesn't need to counteract negatives, but it will be positive because we're squaring the number. If you square a number, no matter what the number is, positive or negative, you'll always get a positive number. Yeah. Positive, 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 positive. Negative one point five square will be positive. Negative one point five says negative one point five is positive. So okay. So let's see, we got the pink plus the green, which is negative, plus the blue. There we go, there's our final value right there, our final y value. Okay. So what do you think? As x gets to be more and more negative, will the outputs tend to go in the positive direction or in the negative direction? So if x squared, if, we, if, if the power is 2 right here, okay, so in this specific case, even if x gets to be more and more negative, all we're doing is squaring uh, like a, a number that's larger and larger in magnitude, okay, and we square this negative number, it becomes positive. So this guy's going to be huge. This guy's not going to be as big because it's not x squared. It's just x times 1, okay? Let's bring it back to something kind of handy. What if we change it so that this number uh, is we subtract it off. Okay. So like negative two. Well, now this piece is getting subtracted. You can see for a value of x is 1.1. Well, here's the pink and the green, taking it down there, and then the blue brings it up to right about there. What if this is negative? Well, we can see the pink, right, that's positive, plus the green, which is negative, plus the blue, brings it to here. That's a negative number, right? So overall, when we add them all together, we get this negative number right here. So but what's going to happen as I let x become uh, more and more positive? I'm going to put bigger and bigger values for x. What's going to happen? Is the end going to be way up here in the positives or way down here in the negative? having trouble with the, the visual of it, just imagine all I'm saying is here's our polynomial, x squared minus 3x plus 1. If I put in a number like 20 for x or 100 for x, the output, the result of that, will it be a big positive number or will it be going more towards negative numbers? Tyler? It'll go towards negative. Why is that? Because, um, no, let's say 100 for x. Uh -huh. Or x. Well, uh, you're taking that 100 stuff and it's just gonna then go up 200 or something like that. But then if you take negative 3, it'll make negative 300. So you're going down 100. Okay, so if x is 100, then this is minus 300. That's really big, yeah. right? But how big is this if, if x is 100? It's what? Huge. Huge. How huge is it? What is it? It's 100 times 100. A thousand. A thousand? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ooh, that's negative 300, that's big, but that's 10,000, right? So once x is 100, x squared is a really, really big value. And negative 3 times x is big, but not nearly as big as x squared, right? What's making the difference? How come this is so much bigger? It's squared rather than just multiplied by some constant. Even though the constant is negative, what if that constant was a negative 20 times x? Well, look at that. There's there's the pink part. Look at that green part. It's huge. Right? It's way, way down there. What do you think? If I put in a big number for x, will I just start to see it go further and further negative? Because that, that negative 20 is going to be so big. 
or if I put in a big enough of value for x, do you think it's going to wind up totaling to something that's positive? Let's so put in a big value for x, okay? okay? Well, this guy's getting more and more negative, right? The green is just going more and more and more into the negative region. Okay, this is 2.6, so negative 20, that's negative uh, 40, you got me there, it's past negative 40. And we just keep putting in values for x, but while this is, yes, getting more and more negative, this is getting more and more positive. Okay. And at some point, it'll get so positive, that look at that, that negative green value just isn't enough to take such a big x squared value force it down into the negative. And the bigger it gets past that, the more and more, the bigger and bigger this squared thing is going to be. Right? I can zoom out actually and show you. It just keeps going and going and going. Oh man, the top of that pink thing is right there. And then the green subtracts all that. That's big. It's just not bigger than the x squared. And then plus 1 is just this tiny little pixel right there, that little blue thing. Okay? And the bigger I make x, the bigger it gets. And like you can see how the green is being subtracted. But the overall just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's just nothing that negative 20x can do to compete with x squared. Zoom back in. You can see how this negative part, because of the negative 20, is really big. But at some point, the pink part will be so much bigger. There you go. That's where it takes over. That x squared term is so much bigger. Now let's look at this other one. We've got an x cubed. Right? It's a third degree polynomial. So as we put in big and big, bigger and bigger and bigger values for x, big positive values for x, what do you think is the total going to be this big positive number or this big negative number? Positive. Put big, big numbers in for the x. Oh, did I? I didn't mean to. If I just keep putting big, bigger and bigger positive numbers in for x. What are we going to see? Just gonna, I mean, they're all positive, as Daniel said before, like the ideal, easy way to see it. And they're all going to be positive, so it's just going to be this big, 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 big positive number. Okay. Um, what about, though, if I make this guy, like I said, a negative before, negative 20? What about that? positive, but negative times positive is still negative. Something dropped. I already checked this before. I'm not going to play with this because it would take too long to figure out what's wrong with it. I'm going to figure it out. 
fix that in the next class. But in the end, what we would find out is that because this x has a 3, and that's the biggest exponent in this polynomial, at some point, this will be the biggest term, right? Okay. We can see at 1.3, this is already the biggest term, and it just keeps on being bigger and bigger and bigger than those other terms. Even if we let the number in front of here be negative a billion, it doesn't really matter because at some point, this x cubed will be even bigger than whatever negative a billion times that x value is. So it's that number with the biggest exponent that winds up at some point being the biggest value in the polynomial. Okay. So what is that biggest exponent called? Degree. The degree, right? So we look at the degree, and that's like, oh, that term's going to be the biggest. Okay. But now let's ask ourselves this. What happens when I put a negative value in for x? negative. When you cube a negative number, you get a negative times a negative times a negative, which is negative. So, yeah, this is working the way it's supposed to, at least. We can see how now this number will become such a big negative number that the overall output will be a negative number. Okay. So, let's go back to Let's say that this is the graph of some polynomial. Okay. Let's say it's the graph of the polynomial um, 3x cubed plus uh, 2x squared minus 50x minus 12. We're not so much concerned with these smaller values. Okay. These smaller values might cause this negative 50x to be quite large and to be actually quite a bit bigger than anything else and be the most influential term. What we're talking about is as we move out on both ends, on the right end and the left end. And remember that a graph is just a picture of all the solutions. It's a graph of all the inputs and outputs. Okay. So if we put in 1 for x and so we figure out what y would be and then we plug you know, plot what y is and put a point there. Um, but as we put in really big values for x, what kind of y values are we going to see coming out of this function? You can try it yourself. Put in a, a number like uh, 75. Okay. Put in a number like 75. You can use your calculator to do that. It'll take very long. Here. this one out, put this into our function on the calculator. So here's our function, 3x squared, or 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 50x minus 12. We want to look at the outputs in the table. So if we put in small numbers like 0, we had a number like negative 12. Well, this would be 0, we get negative 12. Uh, we put it in 1, negative 57, 2, negative 80. Okay, so it's down to negative 80. Then it came back and now it's at negative 63. And 5. Look at that, just from 3 to 5. We're not negative anymore, we're positive. Okay. You think it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger positive? Why do you think that? Because it's a positive variable. What do you mean? X, x is positive. X is po well, x was positive here. 3 is positive, and the y came out to be negative. It's because the highest degree will always be the biggest. The highest degree will always be uh, it'll win, it'll be the biggest, it'll be the most influential, right? And the rest of the terms can't really change it all that much. Uh, we can go 5, we can go 10, we can go 50. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Because the bigger x gets, the bigger this gets. And it's getting bigger really, really fast. 
when you cube a number, that's huge. If you imagine taking 50 and multiplying by itself three times, 50 times 50 times 50, that's huge. So at some point, this number will be so big that the numbers that we get out for y will be also very big, positive numbers, right? So as we move in this direction, we'll start to see the graph go up and up and up and up and become bigger and bigger and bigger positive, okay? What about when we put big negative numbers into this function? What kind of y values do we see? Will we see it go up again? We'll see big positive numbers. Why not? Yeah, we put a negative number in for x, we cube it. Negative times negative times negative is negative. And as we said, because it's cubed, that will be the biggest influencer of what the y value is. So the bigger negative number you put in, the, the more negative, the more negative, the more negative this will be. And even if these are huge positive numbers, they won't be as huge as this is negative. Okay? So at some point, that cube term will start to uh, take over right, the main part of the output, and it'll become a bigger and bigger and bigger negative number. So for something that has a, a 3x cubed out the front uh, as the biggest power, if it's degree 3, we'll see that happen. When we'll see that happen, as we put in bigger positive numbers, we get positive numbers, and when we put in bigger negative numbers, where the output is more and more negative. Not just third degree. What other degrees would do that? All odd degrees? All the odd degrees, because when you put uh, a, a positive number in and you cube it, or you take it to the fifth, or you take it to the seventh, or the ninth, or whatever, well, obviously that'll be positive. And if we take a negative number, a negative number and raise it to an odd power. We're going to multiply this negative number by itself uh, an odd number of times, which means we've got a pair, a negative times a negative, then negative times a negative, then negative times a negative, negative times a negative, negative times a negative. But at some point, there's going to be this last odd negative that will make the output negative. Okay? And if we go far enough negative, we're going to see that that leading term, that, that one that tells us the degree, be so negative that these other terms, no matter what they are, can't bring it back up into the positive wall. It's just dive down to the negative values. So this would be the kind of end behavior, to the right we go up and to the left we go down, that we would see for any odd degree. if I just change this one little thing and put a negative in front of the leading coefficient? What's that? It would be flipped over. It would be, it would be the opposite kind of behavior. Okay. Might not be the exact mirror of, of that function, but it will be the opposite end behavior. Right. Now when we put a positive number in for x cubed, we'll get a positive number. Then we're going to multiply by a negative. That'll make it go diving down into the negatives. This x cubed, say 100 x cubed, or sorry, 100 cubed will be huge, and then we'll multiply by negative 3, and it'll be huge, but in the negative direction. Okay. On the opposite, it'll happen over here. We put in negative values for x, negative 100, negative 100 times negative 100 times negative 100 will be this big, big negative number. Okay. And when we have this big negative number and then we multiply it by a negative, now it flips it up and we get these positive values. So this degree is also any odd degree.
Here we have an odd degree that goes from bottom left to top right, and here we have an odd degree that goes from the top left to the bottom right. What's the difference between the two? Direction. Direction they go, and how did we make it go the opposite direction? By just changing the negative to the positive part of the x. Positive to negative. So in front of the the x that tells us the degree, what is that coefficient called? Leading. The leading coefficient. So not only odd degree, but negative leading coefficient. And this one would be a positive leading coefficient. Okay. What about even degrees? So f of x equals 4x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus 15x minus 100. Well, x to the fourth, that's the biggest exponent. That's going to be the biggest number at some point on towards the ends when we put in big numbers for x. Okay, So it's going to be really big. If we put a big positive number in there, what kind of number will this be? A big positive. Big positive. Then multiply it by another positive, and it'll be this big positive number. Okay. Again, somewhere in the middle, we might, because we have these minuses, wind up down in the negatives. But when x is big enough, that x to the fourth will be so big and it will be positive that nothing else can really change it from being positive. What about when you put big negative numbers in here? Still positive, times positive, still, or big enough of a negative value will also be just taken off into the positive y values. Okay? But if we take all this, copy it, I just change it by one little thing where I put a negative in front of there. How will that change the end behavior? It will be negative. Now it will be negative. It was skyrocketing up into the positives, but then we multiply that skyrocketing positive number by a negative. Now we're going down this direction. Same thing. Negative to an, an even power would be positive, but then we multiply it by negative. be even degree and a positive leading coefficient would be even degree and negative leading coefficient.